Well then, a very good evening. You're with Primetime News. I'm Dasmi Athada for News First and let's start off with a look at tonight's headlines. Construction commences on the Kaluganga Tunnel connecting the Rajarata and Central Hills. Releasing of initial waters to the Kaluganga Reservoir held with much fanfare. Chief Minister of the Uwe Province begs for forgiveness from his councillors. Minister Malik Samara Wikoma accuses joint opposition of misleading the people. Sri Lanka record their first test series victory over South Africa in 12 years. The ceremony to release the maiden waters of the Kaluganga Reservoir and the second phase of the Murugahakanda Kaluganga Tunnel began under the auspices of President Maithri Pala Sirisena today. The ceremony began after unveiling a replica of a 27-foot-tall Aukana Buddha statue constructed close to the Murugahakanda Reservoir. The Murugahakanda Reservoir was named the Kulasingha Reservoir today. The reservoir was given the name in memory of late Dr. A. N. S. Kulasingha, who was a Sri Lankan civil engineer who left behind several technological constructions for Sri Lanka. President Maitri Pala Sirisena also added a 25 megawatt power hydroelectric power station, which was constructed under the Murugakanda Multi Purpose Development Project. The maiden waters were released thereafter. The Kaluganga Reservoir has been designed by blocking the Kaluganga, which begins from the Kalupahana area of the Knuckles Mountain Range, from the Lagala Pallegama area. The 14.5 square kilometer long reservoir has a capacity of 248 million cubic meters. While five reservoirs were proposed to be constructed under the Mahavali Development Program, Moragahakanda is the fifth reservoir under the program. The Moragahakanda Kaluganga project will supply water for drinking and agricultural purposes for the people of the Anuradhapura, Pulanarua, Putlam, Kurunagala, Mathale, Vaunia, and Trinkamale districts. While the project will supply enough water to cover 95,000 hectares of land during both cultivating seasons for the Anuradhapura, Pulunarua, Trinkamali, Kurunagala and Mathale districts, it will supply direct irrigation water to over 150,000 families. As water could be supplied to 9,000 hectares of farmlands in the Madhurigiri area during both the Yala and Maha seasons, 12,500 acres of the lower basin of the Kaluganga and Bisopura will be developed as an agrarian zone. President Sirisena inspected the 96-kilometer-long tunnel which connects the Murugahakanda and Kaluganga reservoirs. This is considered the longest tunnel in all of South Asia. The second phase of construction began today. Water which is collected in the Kaluganga reservoir through this canal will carry 35 cubic meters of water per second to the Murugahakanda reservoir. The tunnel which is being built at a cost of 67 billion rupees is expected to be completed within 36 months. If someone asks me when I was the happiest the most, some might think that I would say it was the day I became president. No, the happiest day of my life was when I released the waters at the Murugahakanda Reservoir. I believe the Murugahakanda Kalunganga Development Project is the biggest and most historic project to have ever taken place which has the capacity to strengthen the economy since the King's era. China, OPEC Fund, Saudi Fund, Kuwait, the Asian Development Bank and Japan have funded the Sri Lankan government with 230 billion rupees for this. Dr. Kulasinghe, who was a noble engineer of this country along with a group of officers, crept through these jungles in 1994. Dr. Kulasinga told me back then about this giant development revolution. Those who speak about this now do not even know how this came about nor its history. On the 25th of January 2007, the foundation stone was laid by former President Mahindra Rajapaksa to begin work here. It took five years to get foreign aid for this project. Even inside those first five years, this project was not included into the Department of External Resources. The priority was such that it was not even documented to obtain foreign aid or to get the loans. I was a person who shed many tears because of this. I left the government on the 21st of November 2014 because of injustices. <laughs> Speaking further, President Sirisena said the development activities in the country are not being promoted enough. The media does not tell you what the government is doing and what is spoken in parliament. Certain media do not report what is needed but the unwanted things that come out of our mouths. 
The media is only promoting anti-governmental propaganda. I am disappointed about that. Over the past three and a half years, I have strengthened this country's democracy, the freedom of its people and granted media freedom to speak and show the truth and report what is correct to the world. To the heads of media institutions which obstruct us and do not promote our activities, I tell you kindly and respectfully, do not shed a single tear after you have attacked us, weakened us, destroyed us, pulled us down and lost the democracy, freedom and media freedom you were given. President assured there will be no room for any irregularities to take place in the Muruga Kanda Kaluganga project. It has been over three years since I took this giant project into my hands as president. From nowhere did I hear there is fraud, corruption and theft happening here. If there is any contractor operating in a substandard manner in the construction of this project by using this 230 billion rupees, make a complaint to me personally. If any politician, state official or contractor is involved in fraud and corruption in this project, they will not be pardoned. They will be granted the highest punishment. I will introduce a new unit for everyone through the media. This unit will have special contact numbers and fax numbers to make complaints about any fraud or irregularity. If anyone steals even a single rupee from this project, that person will be cursed by the nation. That person's entire generation will be cursed. Tensions flared today during a meeting of the Gold District Coordination Committee meeting. The situation arose with regard to an alleged proposal to relocate the Busa prison in Gaul. The Gaul District Coordination Committee meeting was held at the District Secretariat today. Tensions flared when the co-chair of the committee, UMP MP Vijay Palahitiarachi, was speaking on the contentious proposal to relocate the prison. UPFA councillors of the Southern Provincial Council, Krishanta Pushpakumara and Samuare Wansa, had also intervened. <laughs> Meanwhile, an argument broke out in the Uva Provincial Council today over a statement made by the Chief Minister Chamara Sampad Dasanayaka on granting various privileges to councillors. Three UPFA councillors announced that they would sit as independents in the council in the future in opposition to the Chief Minister's statement. As the debate was ongoing, councillors Shashindra Rajapaksa, Kumar Siriratnayaka and Sudarshan Adhanipitiya took their seats as independent members of the opposition in this way. They have cast aside the people's sovereignty and are functioning here today for the Chief Minister's money and for vehicles. You can ask the Chief Minister and the other ministers and councillors whether they have been bought. We need to ask them whether they are on drugs. When I was the Chief Minister, I would not even accept a plain tea from a contractor. When such a statement is made, we have a problem with remaining as members of the governing party. It is not appropriate to continue. Therefore, I must say that I will take my seat as an independent member of the opposition. There are things which we must say too which have not been said thus far. Anyone can bring a no-confidence motion. I am prepared to step aside today. The statement I made is not one that denigrates councillors. During his speech, Shashindra Rajapaksa said 34 were on the take. I have evidence about Shashindra Rajapaksa. That is what you said. We are prepared to say it. After he said this and I was taken out, there wasn't a single ruling party member to wear black bands for me. There wasn't a no-confidence motion against Shashindra Rajapaksa. We also feel pain in our hearts. Issuing a statement today, Minister of Development Strategies and International Trade Malik Samaravikrama accused UPFA MP Bandulagunawadana of making false statements regarding investments from Singapore. 
Minister Malik Samara Vikram notes that in his statement to Parliament, he said that investment proposals valued at more than $16 billion in total had already been received from Singaporean companies and that he had never stated, as claimed by MP Gunavardhana, that Sri Lanka had already received over 16 billion rupees in direct investments. He adds that among the investment proposals that have been received are a $14.8 billion oil refinery complex, which will purely supply products for export purposes. The investment proposals that have been received also include a $1 billion steel factory and wheat and sugar processing complexes with investments of $50 million and $200 million respectively. Minister Samaravikrama notes that the value of these investments is equal to a total of more than $16 billion and that the Board of Investment has already granted preliminary approvals for these projects. The statement also reads that these projects can be initiated in earnest once the necessary lands are released following the prerequisite environment impact assessment. The installation of signal drivers at the Valicada prison to prevent prisoners from using mobile phones has affected the operations of the adjoining government printer and other institutions. Government printer Ganga Lianage told the Sunday Times that mobile phone services had been disrupted as jammers had been set up at the Valicada prison. Lianage explained that they were compelled to use landlines even in cases when urgent messages had to be given. She said sometimes she had to call officials to collect documents from the president's office or parliament. She went on to say they had installed one anti-jammer within the department following complaints from the employees. The prison's department currently using jammer machine for decline mobile conversation. This procedure badly affected to the department for our external internal mobile communication. Therefore, it is more effective to ban mobile phones in prison premises than activating jammer. The payments made to former Sri Lankan Airlines chairman Nishantha Vikramasinghe were revealed at the Presidential Commission of Inquiry today. Zulfik Farzan reports. At today's proceedings, it was made clear, although Nishantha Vikramasinghe received a large monthly salary as chairman, there were serious anomalies when it came to the annual cost centre of his office as chairman. It has already been revealed that Suren Watwata, the outgoing CEO, was paid 3.2 million rupees a month. It has also been revealed that the cost of personal flying training for the A320 jet conversion borne by the company on behalf of its former CEO Suren Ratwatta is US$23,568, which is almost 3.7 million Sri Lankan rupees. While these revelations are undoubtedly important, what needs to be investigated in an expeditious manner are cancellation of three A350-900 aircraft on lease value Rs.14.3 billion, Extra cost of nearly 2 million US dollars for failing to return an Airbus A320 aircraft leased from an Indian company, and many other irregularities that led to losses to the tune of billions of rupees in public funds. The Presidential Commission of Inquiry into the issuance of bonds, where the losses have been estimated by the experts at over 600 billion rupees over 30 years, is yet to see any prosecution based on the recommendations of the Commission of Inquiry. Yet, the second controversial bond transaction needs to be investigated. The civil society claims, just as with the bond scam and many other malpractices, those appointed to top positions are those who are close to the Prime Minister or the PM's team. With elections fast approaching, there is growing concern that no meaningful progress will be made in terms of bringing accountability and responsibility to those who have plundered coffers. The March 12th declaration had requested the people to vote wisely and ensure that criminal and corrupt elements should not be elected to serve in Parliament. The 1990 Suez Area Ambulance Service is now available in the Jaffna district. The ambulances are available free of charge 24 hours a day. The first phase of the 1990 Suez Area Ambulance Service, which was launched with the support of the Indian government, centered around the western and southern provinces. 88 ambulances were made available and the Indian government granted 7.55 million US dollars for the project. 800 employees were hired to provide health care services. As a second phase of the project, the 1990 Suez Area Ambulance Service was launched in the northern province last week. 
The Indian government has granted 15.02 million US dollars for the second phase of the project, while the number of ambulances will be increased to 209. They will cover the entire island. Plans have been made to provide training to 1,782 youths who will thereafter be deployed to provide services through the Suez Area Ambulance Service. Average response time is 12 minutes and 58 seconds. Uh, in fact, uh, something that is uh, better than some even developed countries. Uh, thus far, we have uh, taken more than 86,000 patients to emergency and uh, critical care. Uh, many, 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 many lives have been saved. And also, we are happy to note that 30 babies have uh, been born inside our ambulances. So it's, it's, it's an amazing service. Professor Rohana Lakshman Piyadasa, the General Secretary of the SLFB addressing the Nikavaritya Balamandala meeting, commented on the future leadership of the country. There are at least 15 graduates in every village across the country. We have an educated youth generation. The literacy rate in Sri Lanka is at 98%. Do we not have leaders? There is the father, brother and son. Are these the leaders? Do we have no leaders? We need to have leaders from the lower levels of society who will be leaders in political parties. Speaking at an event held in Madampe today, senior journalist Victor Ivan commented on the state of corruption in the country. I said all 16 of us must step out and work even harder with the SLFP. There is a waterway in Polonnaruwa called the Dekeyala. Have you bathed in that? I have. The water in that place is at waist level. Just as I know the depth of the waterway, I know the depth of the SLFP. We see conflict of opinions. All those who love Mahindra Rajapaksa have banded together. All of them are like shaman. They are the people who take the offerings to the gods. Leader of the National Unity Alliance, Azad Sali, expressed the following views. We see Jayampati, Sumendran, Valiamuna sitting and talking about the constitution. Now, this constitution is trying to remove the powers of the president completely. If you want to remove the executive presidency, say so. Without saying it, without discussing with the president, you all bring amendments overnight and then bring it to parliament. And also, we would like to ask Mr. Sumendran whether he is working for the interest of the Tamil or, my, or minority communities or whether he is working for the Prime Minister's office. When the no-confidence motion that was brought against Prime Minister Ranil Kamasinghe, when he volunteered, well, when he volunteered to even go before the um, uh, commission and uh, even the um, uh, documents for that, the entire document was prepared by none other than uh, Sumendran to Mr. Vikramasinghe. So these are things that has to be looked into because we want all the minority communities to live in peace. But with the attitude and the way Mr. Sumendran is moving, we have a doubt whether he is working for somebody else's agenda. Taking a look at a local story once again, speaking at an event held in Madampe today, senior journalist Victor Ivan commented on the state of corruption in the country. If those at the highest echelons in the country, the presidents and prime ministers, are stealing, then how can there be rule of law? In truth, a main function of state administration today has become the theft of the public wealth and public property that is entrusted to them. There are no party divisions when it comes to this. It has been normalized. Another key component of this crisis is that as they look on, the powerful political leaders of Sri Lanka are declining. Do not be surprised if as this crisis continues, come 2020, it could be possible that there won't be any main candidates for the presidential election. Cash checks were presented to winners of lottery tickets issued by the Development Lotteries Board today. The presentation ceremony was graced by the chairman of the board, S.A. Surya Perma. Winners of the other Kotipati, Jayoda, Shanida Vasana, Kotipati Shanida, Super Bowl, Dasalakshapati lotteries and several other lottery tickets were given checks. The winner of the 310th draw of the other Kotipati lottery, who won over 80 million rupees in a jackpot, was given a check today as well. More than 120 million rupees was distributed among the 21 winners today. Mr. 
we decided to bring all the winners to one location and hand over their winnings mainly because in the past there was a social misconception that though people purchase lottery tickets from the state, the winnings are never given. We needed to prove them wrong and that is why we launched this program. Every other day a millionaire is created from the Development Lotteries Board. The revenue is deposited to the Presidential Fund where 50% goes directly to the Mahapala Fund. It is the Mahapala Fund that provides funding for the over 75,000 university students in the country to complete their education in three to four years. Our contribution to that fund is more than 75%. Former chairman of the Valapane Pradeshya Sabha and SLFP organizer of the Valapane electorate, Jagat Kumar Samraheva and a driver of the Pradeshya Sabha, Jatilal Fernando, was sentenced to 12 years imprisonment by the Nuaralia High Court today. The suspects were proven guilty of misusing a vehicle which belonged to the Department of Agriculture in 2004 and retaining firearms without a license. Nuwar Elia High Court Judge S.U.B. Karliyadda imposed a 10-year rigorous imprisonment for misusing public property and a fine of 10.5 million rupees on each suspect. Failure to pay the fine of 10.5 million, the term of imprisonment will be extended by another four years. The High Court judge also ordered two years of rigorous imprisonment and a fine of 7,500 rupees for the offence of possessing firearms without a licence. Failure to pay this fine, the suspects will be imposed an additional six-month prison sentence. The case against the former Walapane Pradesh Sabha chairman and his driver was filed in 2004 by a group of officials including the then OIC of Udupus Salava, Ruan Gunasekara. A very good evening to all of you as you are joining me, Azra Asan, on Weather First. Let's now take a look at the weather forecast for the next few days. Strong winds can be expected across the island in coastal areas and in the central hills. And also wind speed can be increasing over and over again in the northwestern, western and especially in the southern coastal areas. If we take a look at the weather forecast for tomorrow, light showers can be experienced in Jaffna and in Batikro districts. And also in most of the areas, light showers or cloudy skies can be expected in the up next few days. If we take a look at the weather forecast for day after tomorrow, light showers can be expected in Gaul and in the Batiklu districts. On the 26th of this month, light showers can again be expected in Colombo and Ratnapura areas and on the 27th, light showers can be experienced in Colombo, Ratnapura and in the Gaul districts. Let's now take a look at the weather forecast for Colombo for the next few days. Thank you, Azra. The Socialist People's Front convened a media briefing in Colombo today. If the inmates are using mobile phones, there is a big problem. We are faced with a problem as to how secure our prisons are. We got to know that the head of perpetual treasuries had used his mobile phone. Not only that, he had five SIM cards with him. These are criminals and not normal people. This falls under the security of the prisons. The FTA between Singapore was not brought into parliament before it was signed. There was no debate. The services that are provided in that country generate a lot of income. Through this FTA, if people are brought into the country who provide low quality services for lower income levels, on one hand, we will lose the quality of the service in the country. And on the other hand, the salary scales in our country will get reduced. The domestic services as well as local industries are facing a huge threat. Minister Malik Samaravikrama says, why should we be afraid to compete with the international products? This FTA was described as a betrayal when the matter was discussed in parliament and when it was adjourned. They only receive 500 rupees a day. Based on the number of days and the collection of the harvest, there will be an addition and the amount will increase to 700. We do not have collective agreements with the estate workers only. We have it with the banking sector as well. I heard that the finance minister has said that there is no use of these agreements and that he is trying to put this in the dustbin. The planters are in that mentality. We can see that they are of the stance that there is no point in these collective agreements and that there is no point in bargaining. 
they seem like they will continue as it is. If that is the case, there will be a requirement for the employees to rise up. The Government Medical Officers Association convened a media briefing today and stressed the association will launch an island-wide strike action on the 3rd of August. The Executive Committee reached a clear decision today at their meeting to launch an island-wide strike action on the 3rd of August from 8 a.m. onwards. Starting today, this trade union action will be carried out by all branches of the GMOA and also involves the entire private sector. We have spoken about 10 key issues. There were issues relating to the doctors as well. There were also issues surrounding the health service. There were issues that affect the country as a whole. There were tax-related issues and the Singapore FTA being moved forward without a proper policy. We witnessed the drama in Parliament over this very matter. The parliamentary debate clearly showed the number of lies that they have placed before the people of this country. We know that pages of the Bond Commission report went missing. We do not know what happened to them. In a similar way, certain documents pertaining to this agreement have not been presented to Parliament or to the AG's department. They have been hidden and other documents have been presented. Through this agreement, they are going to obtain health services from Singapore. This is a bad situation. We have to tell the doctors of the country that this agreement seriously impacts the profession if doctors came down from Singapore and started practicing here. We have to protect the profession. The Sri Lankan team recorded their first Test Series victory versus South Africa in 12 years today as a 199-run win on day four of the second Test at the SSC gave the hosts a 2-0 whitewash. And that's a wrap of primetime news for tonight. For the News First team, I'm Dasniya Tawda. Good night.